Hello guys, how you doing? Welcome to Houdini, I'm Tobias and today I'll be showing you how to use multiple iKey chain nodes to solve multiple points along an arc that you need to bend instead of just three. It's a dead simple process, doesn't require any attributes except for the P attribute and you can use it for some pretty complex projects. I've been using this system for ages now especially in my um, prized project, my favorite. What I've done here is like a mechanical leg um, and it works great. So let's get started. Uh, let's delete all these and start over. What we need is our skeleton and our control points here. I've just made a simple animation with the target point just for demonstration purposes. Now we need a rig attribute vop node. This is where all the magic will be happening. And our skeleton goes into input one. Our control points into input two. And here we need a parameter, five of them. For each of the points, three parameters for the I key, for the tip, the mid, and the root. And then the two for the twist and for the goal. Next we need get point transform. We need five of them. We need our two bone I key and set point transform. We only need three of them because we're only setting the transform of the skeleton, not the control points. So let's duplicate this five times, the get point transform for each of the parameters. One, two, three, four, five. And here let's just change a few names. So this is the root. This will be the midpoint. I prefer using parameters than constants because if anything does happen with your skeleton or points get shifted around, all you have to do is just move a few sliders around. You don't have to go back into the VOPnet and start messing around in that and getting lost uh, or anything like that. So now we need the tip. Root, mid, tip. Oh, we've got six. We don't need six. Now we need the twist and the goal point. Now remember, we're adding the control points from the second input. So for these last two, for the last get point transform that correspond to the twist and goal, we need to set that for the second input too. Like so. And select all the parameters and change them to integer and here it's just a matter of hooking up all these dots connecting the dots like so now here our root is connected to two things to the root and x form and to the root driver the mid connects to mid the tip to the tip we need them to touch the twist to the twist and our goal. Okay, now for the output, all we need is our root point, mid, and tip. And we also have to connect our point numbers so it knows what to transform. Just like that. That goes there. And that goes there. And the last thing we need, we'll be working with this blend parameter as well, so I suggest you promote that just to save yourself more time and instead of running around in the VOPnet you can just control everything outside in this beautiful UI. So now once we have all our parameters in our VOPnet ready to rumble we select the display flag and now we just have to move the sliders around. So the root point is 0, midpoint is 1 and the tip point is 4. Now for our control points our goal is 0.2 and our twist is 0.1. So now, if you can see, the I keychain is only working with our first point here. Now that's where the whole stacking comes into play. Because now we want to make 0.2 and 0.3 work in the skeleton as well. And we'll be also using this blend parameter in a minute. So to do that, you literally just press Alt on your keyboard and while holding Alt, just press on your node and move it out the way and it will create a duplicate and you want to feed one node into the other like that 
And here now we're working with, we want to change point two. So here in our mid, we just select two. And we also want to change point three. If we disable the blend for our first node, you can see that now point two is getting fully impacted. So if we copy it again and stack it onto each other, if we disable the blend for point two and enable point three, you can see that it's working great, but only for one point. So now how do we combine all these? Well, we do it with the blend parameter here. So let's disable blending for all of them. Now nothing happens. If we add just a bit of blending, so we do get some movement, but it's not as, this is not all the movement we have. We have a look at our control points, and we ghost this, you can see that it's kind of lagging behind the destination, and that's a good thing, because we only need a certain amount of movement in our first point. So let's go back to that, and disable the purple, Template, I don't know, but it's, uh, I'll just call it purple flag. So for the first blend, we want it to be about 0.3. For the second one, we want it to be about 0.6-ish. But for the third one, we always want that to be 1. And that's because if it's not set to 1, our tip point will never, meet it, never reach its target. It will, it will always lag behind. So our final node always has a blend value of 1 but all the other ones behind it can have a variable blend value and you can decide that yourself depending how you want how much you want each point to, to move and with that all the points are moving in our skeleton let's just see that work of course you can if you're not happy with how it unfolds with how it moves you can set the blend values different amounts for the first and second one. It takes a bit of tweaking, but this looks a lot better. Or maybe not. Here we can change it up a bit. There we go, that's a bit better. And you can see the movement starts to change quite drastically when we change that blend parameter. And that's it. Just using those three nodes, if you stack it one on top of another, on top of another, you can get all the points to activate in a skeleton. And I've used this system for a more complex rig, but the principle is exactly the same. Here in a mechanical spider leg. Works great, all the points arc. Although, instead of using the blend parameter, I've made different target points for each individual I keychain node. So that's how I got a smoother transition between the unfolding of, of a leg like this. Um, but with the blend parameter, you can get the exact same effect. This is the exact same system. Like this one here. So I haven't found anything like this on YouTube. I figured it out myself and I'm glad I did so I can help you guys out. It took me ages to figure out. It usually does take ages to figure out the simplest of things. Hope you learned something today and I'll see you in the next video.